Yolanda Smith. I'm the NAACP Houston Branch Executive Director, and this is the Timeline of Progress. I would say my childhood was pretty normal or typical. I uh, grew up in Fort Worth, Texas. Um, one sister, one brother, many cousins and tons of friends. And uh, just pretty much a normal childhood of getting into you know, athletics and academics, just concentrating on staying busy for the most part. Leadership to me means surrounding myself around people that are smarter than me, people that make me better, people that make the project that we're working on better. I, uh, I think that a big part of leadership uh, is understanding that you, it's not about you, and it's about understanding that we're all in this together. And also a big piece of leadership to me is knowing and understanding and more importantly recognizing what other people bring to the table and putting other people's needs first sometimes, uh, if that means accomplishing the goal. And uh, I would also add respecting others and making sure that they know that they are respected and that their input and their efforts and energy is valued. That is a big piece of uh, leadership to me, knowing that you don't know everything and it's okay if you don't know everything and to acknowledge that you don't know everything. and. Uh, that's a key piece of, of leadership to me. Being intelligent and being on top of your game, but also recognizing that other people bring skills to the, to the project. I would probably say when I was in college, um, a moment that I realized that I could do more was, again, when, when I was in college and it wasn't a whole lot of uh, individuals that looked like me. I went to a predominantly white college and recognizing that at uh, TCU was, the, was my, uh, the college that I attended. And because it wasn't a whole lot of individuals that looked like me, none of my faculty members looked like me. Most of the classmates uh, in the classes that I attended I was normally the only or one or two uh, individuals of color. Uh, and it, I think it was during that period when I was in college that I realized the privilege that others have and that others don't. And recognizing that some individuals uh, had never um, had to even worry about or even associate with individuals that looked like me. And at that time, Ann Richards was running for our governor, and George W. Bush was running for governor. And that's when, for lack of a better word, the bug of politics that I kind of got the, an interest in uh, political activity. and. Um, I've, I've, from there, I think that was the beginning of when I realized that as a 
female and as an African-American female uh, at TCU that I could lend more of my energy to um, activities that involve social engagement, political engagement, community service as well. The blessing of being the director of the NAACP is that there are so many. Um, so there are, there are quite a few memories. I've been the executive director for 20 years. So over these 20 years, uh, I have countless memories of encounters where a real impact was made. Uh, people normally don't come to the NAACP uh, because they're having a good day. It's normally because there's a serious issue. Sometimes it's, it's life and death. Most often it's death. Uh, it's a fight of in some form or another discrimination, or at least they feel that they've been discriminated against. So when we're able to help an individual get their job back or receive compensation for wrongful termination, if we're able to help an individual um, get justice after they've been discriminated against in not just employment but more so uh, of their living situations when they've been kicked out of an apartment because they are quote unquote too loud or you know something that it's really at the end of the day behind the scenes it's really because of the fact that they're black and others don't think that they should be there. Uh, when we're able to help a senior citizen um, that, you know, um, just doesn't have the wherewithal to help themselves and their family members on uh, land issues, uh, it, it's, it's gratifying. So there are moments that I've had over the years that have impacted so many lives that, were, that I'm pretty grateful for. I, as far as a silent mentor for me, I would not say that it was someone that I haven't met. I consider my grandparents my silent mentors. Um, and I'm trying not to get teary-eyed, but because I know the sacrifices that they made for my mom, who was a single mother, my father died when I was nine, so I was raised by my mom, who was continuing to go to school and trying to raise me and my brother and my sister, and my grandparents, who were both, um, my grandmother was a housekeeper for what was considered a very rich or well-off family in the town I was raised in, and my grandfather was a janitor at uh, two jobs actually, General Dynamics, as well as the college that I eventually attended, TCU. When I graduated from high school and even growing up, my grandfather used to always tell or say uh, to my sister and my brother and my cousins that, you know, and we all knew that TCU was a pretty uh, white college, uh, but he used to always say that he wanted one of his grandkids to go to this rich white school. And when I was making the decision of which college to attend because I went to school on a basketball scholarship. I was the uh, number one female player in basketball in Fort Worth. And I visited many colleges and I almost went to UT because I admired Jody Jody Conrad was the head coach for the Lady Longhorns, and, uh, but it was mainly because of my grandfather that I decided to go to TCU because I wanted 
that to come to pass because that's where he wanted one of his grandkids to go to. And I don't regret it at all. Um, I had a great experience for the most part at TCU. Uh, it was a great education. And uh, I'm a horn frog. And uh, I know that always made my granddad proud. And again, I look back on the sacrifices that my grandparents made for all of us, everyone in my family. Um, so I always consider them my mentors and people, the persons that I look up to, as well as my mom, because I know she made sacrifices too, but she definitely had the help of my grandparents, especially when my dad passed away at such a young age. The advice I would give my 13-year-old self is really the the talking points that I give to my 12, almost 13-year-old daughter, Amanda, right now. And um, that's simply to, to respect yourself, you know, and not try to be everything to everybody and know that, that um, you are loved and understand that um, you don't have to try to be in the in crowd and make other people, you know, happy and try to satisfy them to handle your business. And and I and I tell you know my grand, my daughter often that she is standing on the shoulders of others who came before her, people that 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 made sacrifices for not just her, but her mom, her dad, my mom, or her grandmother, and uh, that we have to continue to make our, our family members and make our ancestors proud, especially for the sacrifices that they made. And um, that's my biggest advice to her, is to, to know that She's not doing it by herself, and that she has support, but also that uh, we as a people, we're standing on the shoulders of people who died, bled, uh, and, and made so many sacrifices for what we have today. And the things that she's enjoying today, it wasn't always like that, and more importantly, not to take it for granted, and to be respectful, especially to her elders. Hear me out. Voting is important. It is very important. It is the most important civic exercise that we can do. It is the reason why we have gained many of the rights that we have today because we made a difference in getting active. Individuals especially millennials, don't realize the importance of organizations like the NAACP and what the NAACP has fought for for these hundred plus years. But more importantly, don't realize the strength that we as individuals collectively still have. And as African Americans, we can make a difference we can change policies. We can put people in office that not just look like us, but more importantly, have our backs and will vote the way that they see that our communities need. It's important to understand, again, the strength that as a people collectively we have and that we shouldn't let people take our votes for granted. Don't just assume that we are all Democrats or all Republicans or independents, that we, are, we have a voice, we have a mind, and that if we, if we make sure that we get out to the polls and vote our minds, and more importantly, put people in office that are going to do the things that we put them in office to do, but more importantly, be bold enough to get them out of office when they don't. And we have to continue to identify individuals that are willing to put themselves out there 
So we have to be able and intelligent enough and willing and able, but more importantly, understand the issues that are important and not just be complacent on someone else to do it. Someone else to go and vote or that community will vote. We have low turnout in certain areas in the city of Houston because we have gotten complacent thinking that other people will basically carry the water for everybody else. No, we, it all depends on all of us being involved. And don't think that other people are going to take care of or put another Sylvester in office since this is Mayor Turner's last term. We have to make sure that we go out and we actively seek individuals to support the vision that our mayor and our city council members that we have in office, that we support their vision, but also we hold them accountable, and that's very important. But it's all dependent on us being involved in this thing that we call civic engagement and this thing that we call community, and that's exactly what we are. My name is Yolanda Smith. I'm the NAACP Houston Branch Executive Director, and this was the Timeline of Progress. Thank you.